Right? He doesn't know if you go to the ocean, he doesn't know if you go to the mountains, he has no idea. But this is what God says to him. I will make you to a great nation. One person. Alright? One person. You, again, not, not as a country, not as people, that's God's household. One person says, I will make you into a great nation. And this is how do it. Because I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. Again, it's one person, okay? And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Tower of Babel. A bunch of people came together to try to do an awesome thing, God scattered. And now God says, you know what? This is how I'm going to do from now on. Through one person, Abraham's household, all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. <clears throat> Abraham, at this point, is homeless. All right? God is going to use a homeless guy to bless all the peoples on earth. This, this is why. Next slide. Real simple. All right, this is a picture of Abraham, Abraham and then his household later. Because Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed God. And if you guys don't know the story of Abraham, uh, you guys are thinking, okay, the, the last verse he just says, whoever blesses you, I will bless. Whoever curses you, I will curse. Okay, end of story. Abraham's having a great life. All right, everything will be easy from now on because everyone wants to help him now, right? Because it's like an awesome, awesome promise. Uh, if you guys know the story of Abraham, that's not what happens. The first thing that happens is he goes down to, down to Egypt, and then uh, people say, hey, your wife's pretty hot. And he's like, shoot, someone thinks my wife's hot. I will pretend she's my sister. <laughs> and they will not kill me. He tried to take my life. And then uh, they, Pharaoh takes his wife into his household. Um, and then his whole household gets, gets cursed and plagued and all that stuff. And then he finds out, wait, what the heck? Like, this is actually your wife? You told me it was your sister? Why did you do this to me? Take my back and take a bunch of stuff with you. Okay. <clears throat> First thing Abraham does is he fails. Uh, he, he's a coward, and he fails, and he basically has his wife taken away from him for a while. He eventually gets her back later. <clears throat> I think that, why is that story in the Bible? We get to ask, ask that question sometimes, okay? I think it's to show that Abraham is not a superhero. All right, he's, not, he's, a, he's a regular person just like us. He gets scared just like us, right? He has issues just like us. But God is going to make him a great nation. And what Abraham's power is going to be, right, the way he's going to accomplish God's will in his life is by... Obey God. At, at the end of today, as we go as we go this lesson, I, I want you to catch catch something. Okay, everything in your life that goes well, all right, and you're like, how did this happen? How how is how is all these good things things happening to me? Right? Why why is this journey that God is calling me on? Why is it succeeding? I want you to believe that it's because God is blessing you because you're obeying. Right. There is power in faith. There is power in following God. There is power in believing God's promises. Abraham believed God, right? The Bible says Abraham believed God and was credited to him as righteousness. Follow God. Obey God. Next slide. <clears throat> because we are called to lead because we have an inheritance. And that's one of the biggest things I think, I think we need to understand as Christians. I think a lot of times the Christian life can look hard because you know, a lot of people Christians are like, wait, wait, if I become a Christian, I can't, I can't drink. I can't like party, can't go clubbing. I can't do all this crazy stuff. Why, 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 why would I want to be a Christian? You can look at the Christian life as a series of things you can do, and some people do look at it that way, right? Some people look at if I live a Christian life, then I can't sleep around. If I if I live a Christian life, then I can't watch bad movies, or if I live a Christian life, I can't live my life on money or something. <laughs> what the Christian life is is following God because you believe that God's plan for your life is better than anything else this world can offer you. Because at the end of the day, there's an inheritance. And so, for example, for Abraham, how does that make sense? You already, you already have a country, you have a people, and your father has a household, right? That, when you talk about that household, you, you normally assume that Abraham had a little bit of money, right? Because when he traveled, he knew how to take care of servants and all that stuff. So his life's going pretty good. What God is saying to him is that you have an inheritance that's not here. As good as your life is, the life I'm going to give you is going to be better than here. I hope you guys can identify with that. As good as your life is here at UCSD, God has a better life for you going forward. All right. I was, I was really scared because I was in high school. I did, I did a lot of sports. I did band. All right. So my schedule in high school was like, 
two periods of band, then I have English, and then French, and then I have lunch, and then I have like chemistry, and then sports. <laughs> okay, so my life, my life is pretty good. And I was like, man, am I going to college? Is it, is it, is it going to be like this awesome? And I get and I get to college, and then I plan, I was also in the Marines, and so I was like thinking, okay, so I get paid to work out. So I'm going to do the easiest major possible, which is communications. <laughs> and then, any communications majors in here? Yeah, I mean, you get a <laughs> I actually asked them, I'm like, what is the easiest major here? They're like, communications. I'm like, good. <laughs> and I plan my college around my workout times and stuff. And so I was thinking, like, my life is awesome. Is it going to get better than this? If you follow God, life does get better. You have an inheritance. Okay? It's in a lot of ways it's a spiritual inheritance. Because our inheritance is not to an easier life. I don't know how long you guys have been Christian. Okay. Let me let me give you advice about what's, what's, what's gonna come up in your life. Okay. The longer you follow God, the harder the challenges get. The longer you follow God, the harder and harder the challenges get. I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna elaborate more as, as we go on, okay? Because when you're when you're a baby Christian, you basically have to choose between sin and not sin, right? Sin and what is good. It's like any Christian, like, hey David, you want to do marijuana? No. Yes, I did it. <laughs> this is the temptation. <laughs> or it's like, David, stop cussing. Okay, and I stop. All right, I did it. I stop cussing. As you grow as a Christian, the same battles. Right? And I go to John, I'm like John. Remember, don't smoke marijuana, <laughs> right? But those aren't the same battles anymore, right? They're, they're different kinds of battles, right? When, you, when you're in ministry, you have different kinds of challenges. You have, your chances with people are difficult to work with. Our inheritance is not to easier your life. Because at the end of the day, what is our inheritance? Because God says to Abraham, all people will be blessed because of me, right? God blesses us so that we can bless the nations. I think at the end of the day, what we're trying to do as Christians is we're trying to live out our faith so that all people on earth can be blessed. Because hopefully the joy you're experiencing in God, you want to share with others. When I, when I was in fellowship in college, um, I, had, I had an awesome time. I loved being in fellowship in college. Right? Um, I went to, Har went to Harvest in college. And it was, it was, an, it was an amazing experience. That for the first time, I really felt like my fellowship was like a family. Right? In a very much ways, because like some people in my fellowship, they were young adults, and they would cook. And sometimes I get home, I'd be hungry, I'm like, hey, what are you making? They're like, dumplings? I'm like, all right, I'll be over in 10 minutes. <laughs> and they would just open the doors and let me hang out with them. You know? Um, and I, I thought about that, and I'm like, how awesome is that? Like, I'm, I'm a freshman who doesn't, you know, have any way to cook, but the people in my church would just welcome me in. And I think about all the other freshmen, you know, in City College, what I was part of, they're like, they don't have that. You know, they don't have that. And so, what is living out my faith? I wanted, I wanted them to experience that. I wanted them to experience the household of God, right? I wanted them to experience a church where people <coughs> love you even though they, they haven't really known you yet. That's what we're trying to bless the nations with. Whatever joy you're experiencing here in this fellowship, when you evangelize, when you do outreach, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to bring people into the community of God, right? When, when you get sick and people pray for you and they care for you, you're trying to have non-Christians experience that. So what that is, is the love of God. When, when, you, when, you go, when you go through hard times and you feel like life's going to end and you pray and overcome it, right? What did you experience? The mercy of God in your life. And so when we hours when we evangelize, that's what we're sharing with people. We're sharing, come look at this, right? Come look at Jesus, right? When every single thing I need in my life, Jesus provides. He gives direction to my life, right? He saves me from my sin. So that when, 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 I, when I screw up and I do like all this messed up stuff, I don't think, man, I'm dead. I'm pretty sure of it. Right? If I were to die today, I'm sure I'm going to hell because I'm such a messed up person. But because we've experienced that grace, we can share with others. Right? Our calling is to bless the nations. Abraham did not have an easier life after he left his country. Next slide. <clears throat> and here's the point I'm trying to make. Going from good to great. All right? I want you guys to remember this. I, every Asian American group I speak to, this is a huge point. Going from good to great. I, I spell check everything and I always... Gives him the assurance to move forward. You know, one, one, of the reasons, one of the reasons why we don't we don't move forward in our lives. Okay. One of the reasons why we don't move forward in our lives. 
I think sometimes we're scared um, to give up what we have. All right. Um, for most people at USSD, you guys come from pretty good households. All right. You, at least your family loves you enough that they can pay some of their bills while you're here at USSD. A lot of times our fear is to lose what we have, right? And so it, it's crazy to me because I, I grew up in Temple City in, in LA, right? Where a lot of people were. Some of you Temple City, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Temple City actually changed the life, so I know. Temple, Temple City, when I went there, um, there, were, there were a lot more Hispanic people, there were a lot more white people from different ethnicities, and now it's a lot more Asian. But a lot of my friends they actually came from poor backgrounds. Right? Um, I remember one of, my, one of my friends lived on, on Rosemead, and um, like his place, like the paramedics would be outside his place every night. Because people would drug overdose at like the apartments like next door and stuff. And there were a lot of people who were just poor and then just struggling to get by and doing drugs and all that stuff. And for some of those people, you would think that like their goal in life is just to give up, right? Just to have enough. Um, but surprisingly, a lot of them are, are ambitious. When I came to UCSD, it was kind of crazy to me that a lot of kids, all they want to do is like, I just want to make sure I can pay my bills. I just want to make sure that you know when I get married, I can buy for my wife. <clears throat> I think sometimes we're afraid of the future. Right? We just want to settle for something easy because we're we're afraid of striving for what maybe God has given it to us. God promises to bless Abraham and gives him the assurance to move forward. Here's what I'm telling you now, all right? As a person who's seen God move, whatever God calls you to, he's going to provide for you. Okay? I believe that God's working on every one of your hearts. All right? I believe that God has put you on a journey, and that along that journey, there's going to be a lot of challenges. And a lot of things you do like, I'm not sure how I'm overcome this. So I'm telling you now. The reason why the Bible tells us not to worry about tomorrow is because the grace for tomorrow hasn't come yet. Because if you worry about tomorrow, all you're going to see are the challenges of the and you're not going to think about the grace of God that's coming ahead. There's going to be an amazing amount of grace ahead in your life, but you can't see that yet, right? Because it's got to be given to you. It's something that you don't deserve, but God's going to give to you anyways. So what do we count on? We count on God's promises. We count on the fact that God says he's going to bless us so that when we go on this journey of faith with him, things can provide for us. Right? He gives us the assurance to move forward. Abraham will be blessed and be so blessed that he couldn't stay where he was. I really believe that. I believe that God has called Abraham to be a nation, right? So if he himself can be a country, how can he be in his whole country? It would look like a rebellion, wouldn't it? Right? Because a bunch of people start coming out and they're like, okay, now we're a nation ourselves. And it would look like, like a rebellion. Or he would get so rich that other people would try to steal his stuff and be like, what the heck? How can you get rich off our work? And so God's going to bless Abraham so much that he says, you have to leave. And you know that later, if you read the story of Abraham, later on, him and his nephew Lot, they have, their curse is so big that they have to separate. All right? He has no about sheep because they would overgraze you know, an area. So he has so many herds, Abraham says, Lot, you we have to separate. You have to go there, I have to go here, you choose. Wherever I go, I'm blessed. <clears throat> the blessing of God in your life, you have to move forward. You have to move forward. Okay? Because as amazing as San Diego is sometimes, you know, God has a God has a big world out there for you. I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share with you guys a story in a second to tell you at that point. In order for Abraham to bless all the people of the earth, he had to go where God was leading. Next slide, let me tell you a story. This is LA Fitness on your way, so I don't know who's been here before. Nobody? He's been there, all right, good guy. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when, I was, when I was finishing out college, uh, my, my last year, I knew I, want, I wanted to go to seminary, I knew I needed to get a job. Uh, so at this point, I left the Marines, I wasn't getting income. And I was like, all right, uh, I work out, I've been bodybuilding and stuff, um, I'm gonna go work at LA Fitness. So I go, I go to LA Fitness, and it was like my, my first attempt at getting a job. I get an interview the same day I call. He's like, hey, just come in. I'm like, cool, I'll come in. <clears throat> I sit down with the guy, he's like, okay, you're hired. <laughs> the interview process is literally the last like three hours. It literally like it's like 11, 11 a.m. I called, and like by 2 p.m. I had a job. <laughs> <laughs> it was like super fast. <clears throat> what, I, what I did at LA Fitness, I was a sales manager. So basically I sold personal training. And I was like, okay, I can do this. I'm buff. I was in the Marines, I can like, you know, sell training. And for, I worked 30 hours a week, 
Okay, even as a school, because communications is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I work 30 hours a week. <laughs> I work I worked 30 hours a week. I went for one two weeks. I didn't make one sale in two weeks. Okay, I worked 60 hours and made zero in sales. And my job was to do sales. <laughs> And so I was thinking, like, man, this is the worst job in the world. I hate this place. Like, I'll never do fitness ever again. <clears throat> and then within about, I want to say about four months, um, I, was one, I was one of the top salesmen, and I made seven thousand dollars. All right, in like month of February. Okay, so I was twenty years old. Twenty one. All right, I made seven thousand dollars. Okay, so my parents make seven thousand dollars a month. <laughs> All right, and I was only working thirty hours a week. And then at that point, like it, this actually came thought in my head. I'm like, why don't I just become rich and then just give money to the ministry, right? Because I'm like, this is my first time doing this, and if I can make seven thousand dollars a month, right? Heck yeah, you know. Like how come I just, I'll just, you know, when I, when I left the Marines to do ministry, I'm like, I had all this debt because I had to pay back all the Marines. I'm like, you know what? I'll just make money. Maybe I could just pay off all, all my loans and stuff like that, and make a bunch of money, and maybe I'll just bless the church. Because I, I found something I was good at, you know, in a lot of ways I was, I was blessed to do it, you know, um, <clears throat> because being a Christian, having integrity, actually caring for people, help me make those sales. So I was thinking, like, maybe this is God's calling for my life, right? Apparently I'm blessed, right? Seven thousand dollars a month. I don't know any other twenty year olds making that much money. And then I sat down and I thought about it, and I realized, have I stopped moving? God's having me on a journey, right? And I think God let me daily fitness. God has me on a journey. If I stay here, am I actually continuing the journey? Okay? If the Christian life is a journey of faith, where God is taking you from glory to glory, and where God is increasing your faith, is my faith <clears throat> stopped, installed, if I stay here? And I, and I remember after that month, you know, I, my mind, I was like totally changed. I was like, you know what, I'm at, my wife and my girlfriend at the time, I'm like, I'm going to take her to hot air balloon rides, and I'm going to get up like hot air balloon rides and stuff. <laughs> And I, and I realized I started to become, become a different person. And I actually pray, like, God, I never want to make this kind of money again. And so after that month, I did not make that kind of money again. <laughs> my sins went down, other things happened. <clears throat> so what happened after that, right? Did I complain and be like, oh, God, how come I didn't make $8,000 the next month? What happened after that is I left LA Fitness after that year, and that right there is Bethel Seminary from Google Street View. <clears throat> I, went, I, went to, I went to Bethel Seminary. I, um, at, th at that time, I was trying to get married to my wife, and I was thinking, okay, well, here's my plan. I'm gonna pay off $40,000 in undergrad loans and like different things, right, for paying back the brains, and I'm gonna take on another 40,000, all right, for Bethel Seminary, and then I'm gonna get married. <laughs> that's a great plan. <laughs> and then that's, and that's what I did. I went, I went, I went to Bethel, um, and then in my, my, my third year of Bethel, I got, married to my wife, and we were $80,000 in debt, okay? And at this point, I was probably about 24, 25 years old, $80,000 in debt. Amazing, amazing journey, right? This, this is God's plan for my life, to be $8,000 in debt and newly married. After being married for about one year, okay, um, I started my current job working for OMAF International. I, I'm, I'm a missionary who trains other missionaries, young missionaries. Um, and then my wife, my wife was working for a couple of years before that, and we spent very little. All right, in mm -hmm. um, the years that I was working, I was spending, and I was living here at UTC. All right, well, I used to live at Agencia, okay, including rent. I spent six hundred dollars a month, six hundred including rent. All right, I wasn't really paying rent. I was, paying, I, was, I was sitting on my friend's couch, so I was paying like a lot less rent. Okay, <laughs> and that my food bill every month was like like one hundred fifty two hundred bucks, so I wasn't spending very much money. I lived, even though I had a job, I was only living up about six hundred dollars per month, and after one year, we paid out eight thousand dollars a month. Okay, that's how little we spent on So you do the math. How, how much we saved over here? And now this is my, this is my third year of, of working for OMF, um, and it's just it's just been an amazing journey. But the reason I tell you that story, okay, the reason I tell you a story, <clears throat> when I went to LA Fitness, did I did I have a good job? Right? Did people appreciate what I did? Trust me, when we had the top salesmen in your, in your club, people appreciate you. All right, we had five salesmen. At one point, I was 60% of the sales. All right, as one guy. Trust me, people appreciated me, okay? 
And they're like, David, don't leave, all that stuff. I, I definitely felt that this was a job I could do. I felt it was, it was good, people appreciated it, they were like, yeah, this is great. But I realized that this is what, where God was calling me. Okay? And I'm trying to tell you this. Sometimes the places you're at, you're succeeding in, that may not be the place where God is calling me. Because I realized if I had stayed there, first of all, my faith was in Rome. Because my dependence became upon my paycheck. And in order for me to grow, I had to go where God was actually leading me, even though it was harder. Okay, even though it was harder, is where God was leading me. So I can say today, I went, I went to Bethel Seminary. I started working for OMF, right? I've been able to go to Shanghai twice a year, raise our missionary teams, send a lot of leaders and stuff. And it's been a lot, lot harder than staying at Mary Mason Boulevard and looking at LA Fitness. But it was where God was leading me. Next slide. Build altars and not houses. If you look at the story of Abraham, you will, you will see that what he does not do it is he does not build the Tower of Babel. Okay? Because what did people do before? They're like, I don't want to be scattered. I'm going to build this giant tower. I'm going to live in it. It's going to be awesome. All right? It's going to be like, you know, near apartments 2.0. Okay? It's going to be like this gigantic place where we're all hanging out. <clears throat> what Abraham actually does is as, as he gets more flocks, what does he do? He builds tents. Implying that he's getting ready to move. All right, you guys remember that in the New Testament, Jesus tells the story of a rich man who has so much money. He says, Oh, I have so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build barns for all my money and all my grains. And then I will retire and I'll be happy. And then what does God say to him? Fool. All right, today you're left to be part of it. He dies. What Abraham doesn't do is he doesn't try to store all his wealth in one place, he continues to move. And not only that, when he goes to new places, what does he do? He builds altars. Okay? Every new place that God leads him, he's like, to this point, I have been blessed. Alright, this land I'm standing on produces food and it's good for me because God has blessed me. I build an altar, not a house. Because even though God has blessed me here, I worship him here, but my home is in heaven with God. So I, do, I set up a tent because I'm ready to leave. And then God leads you to another place. He blesses them again. He says, you know what? I'm going to come here. I'm going to build a tent. Even though I'm blessed, even though this place is amazing, I'm going to worship God here, but when he calls me, I'm going to leave again. <clears throat> the difference is about priorities. I'm telling you, just because you're a Christian, you don't default into holiness. Right? No one defaults waking up like, dude, today I'll be so holy as you nuts. Like, people go, watch out. Because I'm going to hold you all over the place today. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you don't default to holiness. All right? Every day, you have to intentionally challenge yourself. You know, one, one of the things I, I, I always ask myself, okay? As a person in ministry, I'm always talking about faith. Have faith in God, have faith in God. And the question I ask myself all the time, am I living by faith? The, are the things in my life difficult enough that I cannot do my own ability? Okay? Are the things in my life difficult enough? Like, if, I, if I'm going to speak, right, I can do that. I've done this for four years. Right? I know how to do it from that line. Or if I'm going to lead a small group, I know how to do that. I've been leading small groups such and such. We can do ministry in a way where we're basically just falling back on our skills. We can. But the way God wants us to be Christians, right, is, is if we're going to teach you about faith, if we're going to go out to the campus to our roommates and all that stuff, and we're going to say, have faith in God, God will bless you, right? You don't see it now, but God is invisible. I mean, everything you need, he'll, he'll care for. But yet, in our own life, how do we think? I have so many skills. I have so much money. My parents have me out every time I need help. Our priority has to be on, am I trusting God in every moment of every day? And the journey I'm on, is it a journey of faith, or is it a journey of safety and being comfortable? That's a huge, that's a huge problem with Asian American Church. I can tell you right now, it's a huge problem. Right, the Asian managers love those houses. If you, got, if you guys go up to Del Mar, right, you see a lot of houses are not white people's houses anymore, they're Asian houses. Okay, they love those houses. <laughs> because what happens when people get blessed, they get comfortable and they stay. Next slide. <clears throat> so one of the questions I'm asking you guys tonight is what is keeping you in your comfort zone? I think everyone has, has a different issue with this. Okay, what is keeping you in your comfort zone? <clears throat> Every single person, I believe by faith, if you're following Jesus Christ, right, the Holy Spirit is 
in your heart, and it's leading you to different things. I don't want you to say, well, all I do is do announcements, or all I do is play guitar. <coughs> you would be surprised at what God does with your talents and with your gifts and He's calling you to. I, I, a quick story, someone said homeless outreach earlier. Um, when I was in college, I actually met my wife at homeless outreach. All right? I'm not going to say you meet your wife, I'm just telling you what happened to me. <laughs> 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 right. I actually, actually, because I, I went to Harvest, right? My wife went to CEC, so how do we, how do we ever meet right? on different paths in life? But then we did homeless outreach together and we met. <laughs> I, went, I, went to, I went to homeless outreach and I was thinking, like, you know what? I'm like 20 years old. You know, I haven't had any offer to these homeless people. <laughs> So one, one, one week I started bringing my guitar. And I, and I guess I'm not a very good, good guitar. I've got three chords, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> Run on my guitar and uh, we sat down with some homeless people and I just started playing. <coughs> and I remember one of the songs I was playing. This woman, um, she was actually Christian. And I was, I was playing a song. Um, when this life is over, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. And I remember playing that. And the Holy Spirit just moved in that place, you know? And then she was just really moved, and she was crying, right? And we were all just really moved. <clears throat> and I was thinking, like, you know, all I'm doing is playing three chords. All right, I'm not even good at guitar. All right, I'm not even going to just draw my guitar out and say, hey, you know what? Let's see what God does. And God allowed me to bless that woman in such an awesome way. I was never taught you know, to bless people through music, I was never taught all that stuff. I just showed up. Some of you guys are called to show up, you guys aren't showing up. Okay? I've, I've been to church a long time. I know when we have events, you're right, like, let's do an outreach such and such, we can't the freshmen. And half of you guys are like, ah, I'm kind of tired, you know, <laughs> Sometimes, all you gotta do is show up. <clears throat> and I'm challenging you guys, alright? And some of you guys know you're the ones who don't show up. Show up. Maybe that's, maybe that's how you leave the comfort zone. Maybe you just gotta challenge yourself and just show up. Maybe for some of the leaders, right? You don't want to look stupid. All right, I'm telling you, that's a huge problem in ministry. All right, I do it all the time. I don't want to look stupid. All right, so I do things I'm good at. I do things I'm good at, and I don't try new things so I don't look stupid. Because if, if I try to do a cooking ministry, all right, that's okay, cooking. And I, and I try it, and I fail at it, man, man, David Pat is good talented, but since I'm cooking, all right, so that guy, he's just a terrible person. All right, or he doesn't really study hard enough or something. <coughs> try. Okay, for the people in leadership position in this fellowship, one of my encouragements to you is, if you look at back at these last few months, and you can honestly say you've never failed at anything, I'm telling you nothing but faith. All right, that's not something like prophetic, that's just common sense, okay? If you, in the last few months, look back on things you've tried, and you've never failed at anything, trust me, you're not living by faith. Especially if you're in ministry, and you haven't failed something in ministry. Trust me, you're not living by faith. Right? What you are living on is someone else taught you how to do something and you're basically just doing it the exact same way. You're not trying anything new, you're not trying anything difficult. You're just saying like, oh, this is easy, I'll just do that. You know what you're going to produce? People just like yourself, not living by faith. And that's just scary. I hope that scares you. Right? Because if you're any kind of small group leader or disciple or something like that, and the people can look at your life and say, that guy does not need faith to do what he does, that's just scary. Because everything we're doing in ministry ultimately points to a God who cares for us. Right? A God who hears our prayers. A God who rescues us when we're in danger. Because following God is a dangerous thing. Ask God. Right? What are you thinking that's difficult? What are the things that you maybe already called me? And I believe God has already called you to a lot of things. Where have you called me that not obeyed? Get uncomfortable. Ask God to give you a burden that is larger than your desire to do what is easy. And this is part of it. Okay, this is part of how you get that difficult task. Ask God to give you a burden that is larger than your desire to do what is easy. So this, this is what that means. <clears throat> Ask God that when you wake up in the morning, you think about a group on campus, or you think about a ministry that you're really uncomfortable with doing. Okay, well, so that if you would do it, it's not going to be easy. All right, and so one of the things. Well, I actually led to homeless ministry, me and my wife, okay? <clears throat> um, as, as well as, she's a fourth year when I was in college. Uh, she started doing a convalescent home ministry. And so a convalescent home is with all these old people in this place in La Jolla, and a lot of them have dementia, and like, they're not all there mentally. 
And that was a really hard ministry to do. Right? Because when I can talk back and forth to you, I can kind of figure out like how I can serve you. But if you have dementia and like you're not really even sure who I am and like just repeating things, I have no idea how to minister to you. And it was after doing that for like weeks and weeks and weeks, right? Like I really started to grow. Because I, I was kind of like, yeah, I don't want to do this, man. This is like not fun. You know, it's, this is not like playing with babies. It's not like playing music or having food with people. This is like talking to people who just look at you and they just repeat things and make it really awkward. And we hate things that are awkward, right? And you sit there and just like, you know, and if you're like, are you Chinese or Japanese? I was like, are you Chinese? <laughs> but you ask God, give me a burden. Give me a burden that is difficult, right? That is difficult, but I love it, right? And then a lot of ways, after I started doing that, I really started to love it. I really started to see the joy in it. And so even though it was so difficult, I continued to do it. And praise God for blessing you with more stuff to to pay the bills. Asian America, you are blessed with more stuff to to pay the bills. God has put you at this school not so that you have a great job, right? God has placed you at this school so that you can be a blessing to the nations. Because who we are called to is more than just people who are easy to average to, right? It's people who are difficult to reach. As we, as we pray for this campus, as we move on from here, right? Look at some of the places around this campus, some places that you might feel awkward with, and ask, God, are you leading me here? Okay, let's pray and we'll move into the next part of the night. Father God, I thank you that you're teaching us, that you're guiding us, that you're leading, leading us to difficult places. Father, I believe that everyone in this room um, is called, that everyone in this room you have put a burden on, and that everyone in this room is on a journey. So Lord, may you bless us. May you care for us in a way that we would know how to live by faith, how to do the difficult thing, how to leave our comfort zones. May you lead us and guide us in the rest of this night. Just as Daniel pray. Amen. I give a hand to David back. Thanks. Can I get an opportunity to explore these prayer points together? Uh, we're going to park you up with the person next to you. And of course, we're going to pass out the And uh, what it says is that in your parish, you're going to share about the question, what are you doing in your comfort zone? And after that, you're going to pray for each other, pointing to you, asking God.